We all hate conflict, right? Fighting, it's bad, right? We are taught to avoid conflict. Don't fight, rise above it, ignore the bullies. They'll get bored and then they'll leave you alone. Well, maybe not. Conflict has been a part of my journey, my life, it's in my genes and my family. And here in Australia, I was confronted, challenged, and bullied. But as an adult, I decided to try something new. As a lonely, scraggly kid with a bowl cut, with a few friends, my parents enrolled me into a local dojo in Cabramatta. I had been bullied. I even tried to stand up for other kids at school, but I always ended up on my back, beaten up. Conflict sucks, doesn't it? My parents put me into the dojo to learn the art of self-defense, to become unpickonable or bully-proof. I was obsessed with watching kung fu movies as it was the only thing that gave me solace at that time. I loved the dojo but I wasn't really in it for self-defense. Well, not really. As a martial artist, one of the first few things that I learned that radically changed the way I live today is to increase safety, move towards the conflict, engage in your opponent. In Kung Fu movies, Jackie Chan doesn't avoid conflict. And when you avoid fighting, you're coming from a place of fear. And I wanted to learn how to be strong. Now my mother, she was jailed for more than six times before finally fighting her way onto a small boat to a refugee camp in Malaysia. My father was put into re-education in a prison where he spent almost six years malnourished and in solitary confinement. By the time I was born, they had both made it to Australia to start new lives. They left the war behind them, but they never confronted it. We never spoke about it. We all hated conflict. Their version of strength is quiet. They even try to avoid the conflict. My parents were too busy burying themselves in coping in this new country, learning a new language, finding work, starting this new life. But their traumatic experiences, my homeland's conflict was dormant, left unchallenged within my parents, and it never went away. Growing up, I saw this fear fester in them. They had escaped, but they weren't able to move on from the war. My father turned to gambling and then became an alcoholic. My mother found work in Vietnam in a marketing company, but in Australia, she was working in a sweatshop doing 10 hour days. She fell into anxiety, depression. She was either sad or angry at herself, sewing hems, sleeves and collars day in and day out. And despite all of this, they never once spoke about it. It was thought that it would have brought shame onto my family if the community knew about it. Conflict avoidant.
praying that like the bullies, if they didn't fight back, their ghosts would leave them alone. Meanwhile, the only thing that kept me going was martial arts. And it wasn't to fight back the bullies or my parents, but it was for my own strength and power, my arms, my legs, and the awareness of my mind. I drew strength from working on myself and I was learning a different way on being strong. High energy punches are strong and fast, but still loose, paired with your legs and kicks, and it's up to your mind's intent what you want to do with it. But physical strength, forms and skills can be learnt and taught. It's up to the artistic conception. A true martial artist is only perceived from within. Therefore, it was essential to master physical movement and martial skills. It was more crucial to train the mind and the spirit and cultivate the chi. We need to embrace conflict as it is what drives us. And like the Kung Fu action heroes, our authentic life is not free from struggle. We need to engage, embrace conflict as it is what drives us forward. Now conflict didn't stop when I left school, bullies and learnt martial arts. I grew up, I completed a psychology degree, but deep down inside, I wanted to be creative. I wanted to make films action films, but to my parents, being an artist, being creative were dirty forbidden words. Being an artist to them was equivalent to being unemployed. So I was going to have to fight that one as well. Now martial arts has taught me well. I was precise in the dojo. I learned to be disciplined, structured, and free flowing and snap back like a punch. I decided that I wanted to live my life kick ass. And like the heroes of my favorite movies, Jackie Chan, the hero's journey that I knew so well, I wanted to turn my life into a film, so to speak. The hero, me, started off in an ordinary world, programmed by the learnings of my parents to fear the world, to be conflict avoidant, but then go on an adventure, challenge themselves, and a decisive crisis wins the victory, comes home changed and transformed. What was going to be my adventure of my life? How do I challenge myself to become a hero and to be strong? I wanted to be in action films, but I grew up frustrated with Australian film and television. I mean, I don't know about you, but there's not many Asian Australian women kicking ass on primetime TV. So I was going to have to fight that one too. But in 2009, I decided to do something pretty random. I made a public declaration that I was on the quest to find Jackie Chan. I mean, Jackie Chan is like the biggest Asian superstar in the whole wide world. And I was the biggest strange kid from Western Sydney. And you know, to be honest with you, Jackie Chan, he's not like a relative from China or anything. I had no connection to him. But that dream, it was something bigger that I thought would ever be possible. 
And as a screenwriter of my own life, it was the most biggest ridiculous idea that could come from a bullied kid from Western Sydney. And I persisted in this quest, my movie, campaigning every Australian capital city and Hong Kong. And then I was stranded in China, broke, left with only $20 and still no Jackie Chan. But here's a bit of a twist in my story. And if you imagine the next eight years as a kind of montage, I kept on working hard. Martial arts had taught me to be a warrior. You must commit to your objective without shame or doubt. I had failed to meet Jackie, my quest, but I wasn't going to give up. Every warrior must commit to the the objective regardless of what people say. We're often too afraid that what we publicly declare to people, we're seen as taken too seriously. Or what if we fail? I adopted a warrior's mindset and continued training, making my own movies in Western Sydney. I got roles in China, and Vietnam, but there I had to deal with a new set of challenges. In the martial arts action genre, less than 1% of directors are females who get to work with action. Hence, as a female action director, it was rare. Now in martial arts, every move comes with a risk. Whether you take sexism in, ignore it or draw a line, every single action that you make can invite the unknown into your life. I was made fun of on set. I was called weak, a silly girl. Some of my co-actors would even ask me, are you gonna show me how to punch like a girl? And I did. I embraced conflict. I understood that conflict is always around us and that success can come at the price of someone else, but failure can rock your whole entire life. That's a battle, that's a war. And I learned something else. People became drawn towards me, stood beside me when they saw me take a stance against sexism. I got a chance to train up to do my own stunts, to choreograph fight scenes, and I think it reminded them of their own strength, the potential warrior from within. Last year, I was hired by someone from the action film industry. This time, it was alongside of, wait for it, Jackie Chan. After eight years, my own personal movie has come to a resolution. I got a chance to work with Jackie on his film, and after that, I got a chance to go on a road trip with him to Canberra to visit his parents' home. And then right before he flew back to China, I shared a moment with Jackie, and this is what I said. Jackie, you look like my dad. No, seriously, that's exactly what I said, (laughs) out of all things. But I guess things have come full circle for me and my family. And living kick-ass comes in all shapes and sizes, but you can't do it afraid. You have to find ways to publicly declare your dreams. Be ready to meet the challenges and conflicts that comes up along the way with powerful, fluid strength. My parents had finally come around 
to creativity and the arts. My dad is now into competitive karaoke. <laughs> and mum, she's passionate about Friday night disco dancing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.